Okay, let's talk about how shift grit works with depression. Now, depression comes in a whole bunch of different forms. We've got typical, atypical, and it's a spectrum. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. We can get really, really, really deep depression that's gonna completely catastrophically just like level your life. And because it's a spectrum, we get like over here, intermittent depression. Maybe it comes in bouts, maybe it's episodic. That can be a thing. And then we get what is the precursor to depression, which is kind of just feeling like a Blah, kind of, you're just always kind of da-da-da-da. There's this other thing called dysthymia, which is kind of a low-grade depression that's just there all the time and it's there for a really long time. So it can look a lot of different ways. So don't worry about it being classified as like, this is what it looks like for that person, so this is what it has to look like for me. It doesn't matter. And like I said, it's a spectrum. So you can also just have episodes of moods that don't meet the criteria for the uh, online search for depression that are really messing with you. It's okay to focus on jumping in at that stage and getting them out of your way as well. Now, when we're working with depression, we want to go and figure out what are the core beliefs that are causing this. And the reason I say beliefs is the limiting beliefs are these things that pop up and they originate from non-nurturing elements in our early developmental years. So non-nurturing elements, little things that mess with us, sometimes big things that mess with us. So you can get your capital T trauma, so maybe some abuse or um, parental abandonment, big things that happened, domestic violence, all of that. But there's also kind of more subtle ones, harder to catch sometimes. Maybe it's favoritism of a sibling. Maybe it's something that was a parental divorce that really just disrupted your environment, created chaos for you as a child. All of these sorts of things will have effects on you and how you see the world. That's when they pop up into limiting beliefs and that becomes a lens for the rest of your life. Now, that limiting belief might have been a thing at that time. So maybe in a parental divorce, you were really powerless, you know, a bunch of chaos going on, you couldn't solve it, you're a little person, etc. But if you keep that I'm powerless perspective, now we're going to have it creating some limiting factors in how you behave, what your emotional reactions are, and, you know, the things that pop into your head. So rather than seeing a situation at work where maybe it's a kind of argument with a coworker, rather than being like, you know, I'm empowered, I can go talk to them, we can work it out, something positive can happen. We just automatically then step back and it's like, I'm powerless, I can't do anything about it. And the more powerless we feel, the less we act on our life to make it something we want. So the more that starts to slip away from our cognitive and what our goals and values and wants and desires are. So we see this divergence because the pattern theory is starting to run us. So the I'm powerless, I need to be powerful, pressure on that, can't do it, too much pressure, so we opt out, and maybe we're doing things that are the total opposite of becoming a powerful person, right? Instead of going and talking to the coworker, power-inducing behavior, healthy power, um, we're doing that avoidance type stuff. So self-fulfilling prophecy, then we are powerless. We haven't done anything to change our situation, we can't, it's not happening, we're just kind of stuck in this loop. The more we have situations like that, the more our mood goes downhill, the more our mood goes downhill, it can get into the territory of extreme mood fluctuations. It can also start to go into the depression territory. The other thing that affects that is when we're not doing empowered behaviors because we believe that we can't or that we've tried and can't and that limiting belief is driving us instead of our cognitive thinking mind, what happens is we start to, en masse, not do the things that create an empowered, happy human animal. So that means maybe we're not having a good sleep pattern, we're not eating properly, we're also you know, not doing the exercise thing. So we start to amass a lifestyle that further impacts that depression because there's definitely a physical aspect and other chemical aspects that are impacted by that, which get worse and worse and worse, and then we find ourselves in a spiral. The other thing with depression is it also is accompanied by a feeling of being stuck, like you're trapped in that mood. So a common cognition that we do, a common limiting belief would be, I'm trapped. It's kind of another version of the I'm powerless. So when you get a nice little cocktail of I'm not good enough, I'm a failure, I'm powerless, these cognitions all act together to create that opposite of the rose-colored glasses lens 
And then we get that like loop into the rabbit hole of not the lifestyle we want. So what we do is we identify those, that's session two, session three, then we're gonna go rip those limiting beliefs out of your head. Those are the follow-up sessions and we've got five little tricks for each of them. And that's what we do, that's how we treat depression. To wrangle your walnut brain, click Start Therapy below.